Hey everyone, Adriel here. Uh, this video is very different than the rest of my channel, but I couldn't find a lot of information online on how to do this. And now that I've got it done, I just kind of want to share it out. Uh, the thing I want to share out is uh, I've got a room that heats up and cools off uh, too much. <laughs> and it's hard to control. So my main furnace, uh, if it kicks on and this vent is a little bit too open, uh, it cooks this room. And if the vent is too closed, then it gets too cold. So this is, a, I'm in Alberta. I don't have to worry about it either. I have no central AC, we don't need it. Uh, but it does get very cold over the winter and uh, and that can cause a lot of uneven rooms. The real solution here, this is, a, this is a, a, an older house, a real solution would be to get proper uh, uh, backflow, proper like venting going on in here and uh, and that kind of thing. But I don't want to do that. I, that would take that would take too much effort. And really what I wanted to do was motorize this vent somehow so that uh, it would open when it was uh, cool in the room and then uh, start to shut off when it was hot. I wanted to use an Arduino for this and uh, some electronics to, uh, to automate this so that I don't have to. Uh, part of the problem, uh, one of the things I have been doing uh, is, uh, is covering this vent over uh, but if my cat lays on it, well, it kills all the air in the room. Uh, and if my wife cranks it all the way open, it cooks the room uh, in, in short order as well. So um, that's why I wanted to motorize it. And that's why I needed to control the amount of air coming into the room. Uh, now I looked at a couple of these. Uh, the problem is to mount a solution to the back of this thing. A lot of these, like the, uh, uh, the surfaces are, are kind of chintzy. They have a lot of resistance by design so that air doesn't knock the uh, the baffles around or the louvers around, whatever you want to, want to call them. Uh, so if I put so, uh, uh, if I automated this, I would need to uh, potentially work over some of the different pivot points uh, and then put my servo on there and, uh, and get that going. So I didn't end up going with one of these. Uh, instead, uh, you know, below the, uh, the vent, it, it actually goes into a, a round pipe. Um, and I found these little guys. This is a plastic, very simple hinge on there, uh, and it's it's a one-way flow, and it's and it just slaps shut when uh, when the air is uh, is not flowing. The nice thing about this is really very little resistance with it, uh, and that little resistance can be completely overcome by a really basic servo. Uh, so that's the full setup. I've got uh, a temperature sensor on here, an Arduino Nano, and a servo motor, and this thing automatically uh, adjusts where the vent is based on uh, based on the temperature of the room. So I'll just uh, I'll just plug it into my computer here and show you guys uh, what it looks like when it's adjusting. And that's it. So uh, it's set right now in here. It's about 20 degrees. So it's set to just let a little bit of air through. Uh, I've got a couple of different clip points in there and I've got it set to, to just do this once every five minutes because I don't want this thing like slowly adjusting overnight. I just wanted it to just once in a while, change the what uh, what's available and uh, and change how much air is coming into the room. So this is a temporary setup, um, but the idea is this is undersized for my vent. Uh, I actually have too much airflow, so um, restricting it is the uh, is the option I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm going to embed this inside the uh, the vent and uh, and just leave it here. If you have access to the outside of the vent and you've got one of those um, uh, damper adjustments you might be able to use just a big chunky uh, servo and adjust it from the outside. But for myself, I needed, I, I just wanted a temperature sensor and the whole, like all the electronics upstairs uh, in this one room. So that's why I opted for this setup. Um, I haven't finalized uh, uh, the, uh, uh, like I'm probably gonna put this in a little project box and uh, uh, keep it out of the way, uh, but I'll give you the, lo the long story short on the components so that if you have this problem, you can do it at home and you can fab up whatever you need to. Uh, so this is a basic servo motor. It's got 180 degrees of motion. Uh, they're actually pretty easy to control. There's a couple of example um, examples that come with Arduino. Uh, they're three wire um, and a lot of these things you can get uh, they'll work in a five volt range. So you'll go ground, five volt, and then there's uh, one line that goes into the Arduino that is like a uh, pulse modulated uh, square wave that tells it where to position the, uh, uh, the damper. Uh, that is very convenient because five volts there, the Arduino Nano can also take five volts and a basic USB plug takes five volts. So you can keep this all on low voltage and you don't have to use any any voltage transformers or anything like that. If you wanted to go battery powered, you might have to, but uh, I didn't choose to do that. 
um, and that gets us uh, a line in. Now, if you have a really cheap USB uh, power cord, you might find it's like this one, and it's just got two wires, and it's just five volts in ground. Perfect for something like this, right? Uh, let's see here. So I've got it on a board here. You, you don't really need to do that. I just wanted to do that for just soldering some of the connections between here. Uh, I've got a basic uh, temperature sensor here. Same idea there as well. Ground, power, signal. And, uh, and that's going into the Arduino board as well. A um, couple of things to take note of uh, when you're programming these things. If you're programming it and you're powering it, so you're getting power in through the USB and power in through the USB cord over here, uh, that differential might cause your servo to do some weird stuff. Uh, so when you're, do when you're powering that servo, try to have it either uh, powered off the 5 volt here or separate entirely. Um, these things, like this little guy here, doesn't take a lot of power. Uh, that big guy over there does take a lot of power. Um, I've actually got them wired up so that uh, they're taking power from the USB cable and not through the Nano, because the Nano can't really supply that much voltage. Um, but it can it can supply that square, the, the pulse to uh, control on, on where to set this thing to. And they're, actu they're actually pretty easy. You can set it, set it to anywhere from 0 to 180 degrees. And uh, I would really recommend, I've actually got a horn uh, that's kind of glued to the top of that louver there, and then I've got a horn there. So by adjusting where this wire is, whether it's uh, a far out or close in on the horn and far out or close on this arm here, I'm able to choose how much distance it goes, like how, how wild of, of the swings uh, uh, it, it can do, um, and that made it easier as well. Um, I did mock this up with some foam core board uh, just to uh, just to try it out and see if it would work, and it <laughs> worked really well. Uh, hot glue didn't uh, didn't survive in the register for very long. It, uh, it wanted to pull off, uh, so that's why I've got this uh, this sheet metal and I've got it uh, uh, riveted into the uh, uh, louver here. So the only uh, the only other like major change I'm going to have is I'm going to put this thing in a project box and I'm going to get a uh, uh, a remote thermocouple. This is this one's mainly used for uh, for just testing out uh, because it's it's got these three pin header on here. Uh, whereas they sell some waterproof like cords and I'm going to put the snake that somewhere where it gets a a better read of what temperature it is in the room. All right, here's my Arduino sketch. Now this is really taken from a couple of different examples uh, that I pulled out of. Uh, uh, out of the examples sketches uh, on the Arduino program. Uh, so you can see here I'm using one wire, Dallas temperature, and I'm using servo.h. Uh, I'm defining my servo as being plugged into port 2 on the Arduino. That's uh, that's data port 2. Uh, and then the uh, one wire uh, just magically figures out. No, wait, it, uh, it attaches to pin 9 here down at the bottom. So that's where I attached that servo. Uh, I did have some serial stuff in here. I could take this out if I needed to because I don't really need it anymore. Uh, and then that uh, uh, that's all my setup there. Uh, down below here, let me just roll through what we've got. Uh, so I've got the, uh, the sensors grabbing the temperature in Celsius. Uh, and then I've got a servo position here. And this, this I'm really using just to control... Um, so that the program remembers where where it is because if it remembers where it is and it thinks it needs to go to the same spot i don't want it to adjust the, the servo at all uh, even if you send the same uh, degree of adjustment to the servo sometimes it makes little sounds and i didn't want those i, I didn't want it to make any sound uh, overnight when if, if there was no change necessary uh, and really so all we're doing here is one big if else statement if the temperature is less than 18 degrees uh, and we're not 179. 179 is, is at the far range, uh, end of the range. Uh, I found sometimes if I would put it to 0 or 180, it would kind of make these clicking sounds, and it wouldn't kind of quite make it. Maybe if you got a better servo, <laughs> it might last, or it might, might take those uh, better, uh, but mine didn't, so whatever. I just set it to 179 so it wouldn't make any other noise. Uh, and then uh, if it isn't at 179, then we do need to change it, and I tell, I tell the servo to write 179, and I, I, I log the I servo position at 179. So now we're at 179. Um, if it's not less than 18, then I check, hey, is it less than 20? Because uh, if it's less than 20, well, we should probably open it a, a little bit. Uh, one, uh, at 18, it's opening it all the way. So, or, so anywhere between 18 and 20 opens all the way. Uh, and it's anywhere less than 20, uh, we're going to open it just a, a little bit less, 
less than 22. We're just going to really open it a crack. And other than that, we're going to uh, set it to five. So basically all the way closed uh, and, uh, and we're going to leave that. And then I have a delay of 300,000 milliseconds in here, which is five minutes. So that's the loop. It just keeps doing that over and over and over again. Uh, and uh, uh, once every five minutes, takes a temperature read. If it needs to adjust the temperature, adjust the temperature uh, and away you go. So um, all in all, this was a pretty easy project to do. Uh, if you've got an Arduino setup that uh, includes a bunch of sensors, you could probably mock one of these up pretty quick and then order your parts from Amazon or China or something like that to, uh, to actually do the build. Uh, as for myself, again, I'm just waiting for that one, uh, that temperature sensor, and then I'm, I'm putting it in the vent. And uh, I've already tested it out, uh, just kind of mocking it up and, and, and leaving it overnight. And it made a huge difference. It really uh, better controlled the temperature in this room. Um, on Amazon, there's a, there's a, there's actually some vents that you can get that that do this. So you can just buy that are commercial units for about eighty bucks that boost it with a fan. Uh, so if if your room's not getting enough heat or enough cooling, it'll get a kick on a fan to uh, to add it in. But this is the other <laughs> the other problem. This is uh, cutting it down to an acceptable level and maintaining it in a room that uh, that is difficult to cool or heat. Uh, so if you have this problem, uh, you might want to check out uh, making these. This is cheap. This uh, our Arduino Nanos are like three bucks. Uh, sensors like three bucks. The servo was a couple bucks. The most expensive part was this at, uh, at right around, I think it was 10 or 20 bucks. So, um, for just a little bit of money, you can make your rooms a lot nicer to live in and, uh, a little bit nicer, uh, temperature. So thanks for watching.